We are interrupting our normal programming schedule to bring you breaking news that the red tractor scheme has died. A slow and painful death. All major UK supermarkets and the National Farmers Union have entered into a period of national mourning with all meal deals flying at half price as a sign of respect. I've just made that bit up. But following the recent episode of drama, I think it might just turn into reality. Most dictators and tyrannical regimes have a shelf life. Zimbabwe, the Soviet Union and Iraq all thought it was a good idea until their dictators were overthrown by foreign intervention, military coups or social unrest. Now, North Korea's still hanging on in there, but I reckon Kim Jong-un's going to get his arse handed to him sooner or later. And that's for Red Tractor, UK farming's answer to North Korea? Then I'm going to give them five years, and here's why. The late 90s and early 2000s were a difficult time for British farming. BSE and salmonella crisis and then foot and mouth disease all had a dramatic effect in public trust in the quality of homegrown food. The industry needed a quality standard that would restore such trust and in steps Red Tractor or the British Farm Standard as it was known when it was launched in 2000. At the start the intentions were good. Red Tractor's key purpose is to reassure consumers that UK food and drink is produced safely and responsibly. No issues there, so where do I sign up? But like all dictatorships, things evolve and change. People start to do stupid shit. Like getting to bed with the wrong people, egos start to inflate, and they forget about the very voice of the people that they supposedly represent. And therein lies a the problem with Red Tractor. What started out as a simplistic organisation and mission has turned into a bureaucratic nightmare for the farmers it was designed to serve. Increasing costs and mountains of paperwork for very little return have led many farmers to question whether it's worth continuing. The onus of producing food to the highest of standards isn't translating into a premium price in the supermarkets, whilst at the same time the supermarkets are lured into importing cheaper, lower quality produce from overseas. Through a complex web of boards and affiliate organisations, British supermarkets have far too much influence over the running of Red Tractor. The newly announced Green Farm commitment from Red Tractor is a prime example of this. In asking producers to jump through more costly hoops, which will all benefit the retailer without any of the financial benefits being passed down to the farm gate. If retailers didn't have enough power in the supply chain already, then this move by Red Tractor tips the scales even further. So what's the point? Well, as it turns out, very little. Fundamentally, Red Tractor have lost the trust of British farmers. Rather than working with the producers, Red Tractor have chosen to get into bed with the big retailers, allowing their power and influence to spread even further. And you can only shit on people for so long before they start getting very pissed off. And whilst I don't think we're going to see a military coup, a social uprising could very well be on the cards. Now the concept of red tractor is actually really quite good but the reality is something very different. There needs to be a seismic shift away from retailer influence and back to the original purpose of supporting British farmers and the quality of British produce. The structure needs a complete overhaul to make it much more simplistic and actually deliver real value for farmers and producers. Because if it doesn't do that, then farmers are simply going to take their money elsewhere. And that will be the death of Red Tractor over the next five years.